this little release, the major theme has been increasing the capability and the vibration and frequency of the main. Both things lift work done design mode. So if we look at the vibration improvements, you've got, sorry, Jeff spoke about this earlier, so some more loading methods, multiple simultaneous PSDs to look at real world conditions on your component when it's really multi-action, multi-point loading, sign and random loading, sign dwell, uh, multiple scalable temperatures, so additional methods for doing scalable static offsets, improved methods for solving the complex stresses, and volumizing method solving. So some, some quite big changes in terms of the technology in there, some new capabilities. And one of those, two, two parts of that are an extra option within vibration as version 11. So the multi-load vibration option now allows you to do multi-PSD and sign on random load. I saw earlier we've also improved the interface a bit, partly because we've added some extra complications by doing more things within that interface. But now this is, a, as a load provider, it's much more standard, same as the other load providers, whereas before the vibration one was different allocated loads differently and worked differently. So now much, much more standard process and just separate tabs for all the, uh, the more complications you've added. Also now supports directly the vibration load generator. So we supported the subset of the data that brought in before. Now you can set the option within the advanced tab to read your metadata from the vibration generator and that will drive your analysis completely. So if you change that from PSD to sign on random, you pull that metadata in and change the loading method automatically. So it's basically the same setup as you already use within the Glyphworks accelerated testing area. Also makes some difference, there's some improvements in terms of the performance. So this is mainly the, the move now to the lane modal distribution to be supported. So as Jeff mentioned earlier, much uh, decrease in the file size. That leads to some speed improvements. And that's now supported in Nash and Abacus and Ansys within the, uh, the distance signals model. So, much larger models can be coped with, can run much larger models. Much more frequency resolution so you can get better fidelity to the results. So, before, if you wanted much more frequency resolution, your FE file got much, much larger. Now you can have exactly the same FE file size, and you're just changing the size of the time file for the model part of the data file. So, much, much better resolution to be achieved as well. Also, looks at adding some things to virtual load generation. So we've added the ability to look where you should put your gauges. So as, as Jeff mentioned uh, this morning, looking at the strain gauge positioning, added an extra glyph to be set up to do that automatically so you've got a process already set up. And that is now in a new virtual load generation option at version 11. We've uh, improved the multi-axial, taken out a beta and then made lots of changes to that. So it's now much better than it was. Plasticity models are much more improved. Uh, we've also added to the composite. So we're doing quite a bit of work on the composite side. The R&D group's doing quite a bit of work. And we're doing this, although it's on research and development, we're doing this in cooperation with lots of different customers and trying different models out. And we're just about working at the edge of what's possible to do with fatigue and composite. So this is where we're pushing the envelope more than we do, but normally do in terms of the software we generate. Normally we're implementing things that have got past the research stage we're implementing so people can use them. This is really right at the edge of research and putting things in just as they become usable. So now helping out in the uh, R&D process within customers as well. And this one's actually in beta. This is still being developed. So it's there, they're, they're, they're being used by a few people, but still in the validation stage. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday. We, we, we have the premium materials database. We, uh, we have a materials laboratory in the UK where we measure a lot of materials data for customers and for ourselves. And uh, last year we introduced a premium material database within the CDS, licensed environment, where we put data we've measured, where we validated that data, lots of stress and strain life data, for now about 95 materials. So we've got validated data in there that you can get access to if you're running a CDS system. And we've added another eight materials at the first version. And we've going to be keeping that sort of speed up, so adding 8, 20, somewhere in that region, depending on what else is going on in the lab and how much R&D activity we're doing in the other areas. But a number of materials. So if you have any interesting materials that you think are applicable, that are generally applicable, we, 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 useful information to us, 
And if you're trying to figure out maybe we'll add that to a list of things maybe we can add to the website. Some few other uh, uh, announcements we've made to change some of the work examples. So we've added train gauge position to work example 20. So to work example 20 is where you've got the flow that does the load reconstruction. So we've added a gauge selection section for that, so you can use the where to, where to put your gauges part of that uh, work example. We've added uh, work example for fatigue of rotating shafts in 24. And also, as Jeff mentioned earlier, the, the, the solid seam wells uh, tools. We've added a work example number 25 looking at fatigue analysis from solid seam wells. And that includes the macros for ANSYS and uh, Altair for generating the weld configuration file. So they're included in the work example. Uh, some improvements to FE display. I think Joe mentioned most of these. I think he went through most of those. Uh, the support for abacus input files is specifically for doing spot weld analysis from o abacus ODB files because they don't include the connectivity if you've got ACM type elements. So that connectivity is not in there. So we can't find out what the solid elements connected to in terms of the shell. And we need to know that in terms of the spot weld analysis. So now you can use the input file and then add the ODB file on top. We'll read that connectivity from the input file and, and be able to do that analysis properly. The load mapping property page we've already seen. It's got the advanced edit screen on there. We've added a beta support for throat failure and fillet welds. It's not really a failure mode for fillet welds unless you make really bad fillet welds. But we have a customer that's requesting to functionality. So we've added it at beta. It's in there for some customers to look at. Support from what? Oh, yeah. Support from what? You are a number of property groups. Uh, we had an issue where a customer generated a single property group per element in a million plus element model. And then we try and create a page of property groups and it just didn't like it very much. So <laughs> we've now put a facility in to avoid doing that issue. You do have to generate a model like that. It's not very usual, but shouldn't. I don't think the customer can quite work out what you managed to do with it. And we've also noticed for LS Dynas results for repeated entity IDs. We do this already for Abacus, for example, where you've got multiple parts. So you have the same element or node IDs in multiple parts. Dyna allows you to have multiple element numbers of the same number if they are shells of solid. So we can do that as well. So this is uh, basically Campbell Plot is a very old technology for doing blocks of waterfall type data that was originally designed for pen plotters where you've got a single pen color and all you could plot was a single monochrome plot. So you something that defined the scale based on the size of the circles you drew. So this has got that capability and some extra things in there in terms of the extra lines you can add and the visibility of other things. And also plotting of multiple data sets. So lots and lots of overlaid data sets where you might be doing comparisons of different sets of results. Some extra things in there about picking peaks of the data out and looking for uh, matching them so you can control how much of the plot you see and look a bit more interesting about what stage you're in for. Uh, in previous moment, we've also added uh, zoom transform to uh, three different glyphs. So this is an extra functionality within those glyphs in frequency spectrum, joint time, frequency, and waterfall analysis. This applies a zoom transform that allows you to zoom in on a particular area of the data you're interested in. So if you've got uh, a number of points in your book and you get a particular frequency resolution out of that data currently, so you get whatever resolution you get based on that buffer size. If you then do the zoom transform, you can pick top and bottom frequency, numbers of points between that to get whatever frequency resolution you want. So you can zoom in on a particular area of interest in terms of the frequency spectrum, or you can just get better resolution than you were, than you, you were getting in a particular area of interest. So that's going in all three of those glyphs in, in the standard frequency tool. Uh, some other announcements. Done a little bit of work on performance enhancements, so looking at speeding up the software in general. Uh, one particular thing with large glyphs, we looked at uh, up to 30% improvement in speed between version 7 and 11. We're continuing to look at that in the future as well, so looking at some of the things where we've got bottlenecks in speed, and see if we can improve those as we have the coming years. Uh, we've introduced a couple of new glyphs. Uh, first one's auto and cross correlation. So this is for detecting uh, underlying repeated type of relationships in the time domain. So if you've got the same feature repeated, echoes of that same data, 
it will identify the, where those are and the, the time bit between them. And then the convolution glyph, which calculates the response of a system by convolving it with an input response form. So you've got two inputs, one your data, one a time-based input enforced response, which involves those two together. So this can do specific enforced response filtering based on a time-based input input response. A little similar to the for a Fourier filter we've already got, but just does it in time domain. And we've also, as John mentioned earlier, added Kalman filter to the GPS processing glyph as an extra option. So a little bit uh, more help in filtering your GPS data. So that was a quick summary of what's gone into ENCODE 11.